This is probably the best dive bar we've ever been to. Snake and Jake's Christmas Tree Club Lounge. You know, it really doesn't look like much with its faded beer signs and old Christmas wreath hanging above the door. But inside, you'll find a quiet solitude most simply aren't used to in the Crescent City. To find out more about the bar, we sat down with the owner, Dave Clements, and chatted over to Schlitz. Then after realizing they only light the place with Christmas tree lights and finding a light in our rental car, we sat down with him again. My neighbor says at one point it was where they dumped coal. And if you look at the wall up front, it's kind of at a slope. And they apparently filled the room with coal and the neighbors would come and shovel the coal they needed. Uh, then it was an auto mechanic shop at some point in time. I've, I've heard various stories, but I'm not sure how. Uh, I think they're true, but I, I couldn't swear to it. Yeah. Obviously, the place is unique, with a past as shady as its interior. Dave's past is a bit clearer, though. He was a musician, playing at bars, until he had the opportunity to buy this place back in 1992. I'm riding down the street, saw it for sale saw my friend Russell across the street and hit the brakes. Hey man, Russell, what's up? How much for that? And he goes, cheap. <laughs> so I said, all right, he called up and uh, they wanted $35,000 for the bar and the house next door. So I said, that's a pretty good deal. You know, This is 1992. So um, I didn't have any money. I called a friend of mine, Macon, and uh, he said, oh yeah, I might be interested. Um, I'll offer him $13,000, so like, I can't walk in and offer that. He says, that's all I'll give you, so they took it. <laughs> he tells us there was hardly ever anyone in here, but then, one day, it was discovered, and its popularity exploded. Yeah, we kind of were slow, slow for the first year or so. I bartended, and terrible bartender, I didn't know anything. <laughs> And, uh, but a few people started trickling in, and we had some people that ended up, the way you got a job working here was by hanging out drinking. <laughs> so my friend Griper, B Singer, Joel Jackson, a few of them would come in and uh, they would buy something called fish water, which is Jägermeister and orange juice. <laughs> And that pretty much kept the bar going. We'd like, I'd call Tony, Tony, we rang 40 bucks last night, you know, woohoo, man. <laughs> and uh, then got this guy, Frank, to come in, and he started bringing bands over after gigs and kind of getting a little more of a late night thing happening. And then it just kind of went nuts. It just took off and we got to be the hot place and it was packed every night. Snake and Jake's is beloved by its customers. It gets crowded and rowdy, but it's so damn dark in here that you really can shut the outside world away. They aren't fancy here. They don't even try to pretend to be. We were told their signature drink was a possum drop, a simple concoction created to honor a recent event. Because a, a possum actually landed on somebody's head here one night. A ceiling tile fell out, and a live possum rode it down onto his head. Right over there, which I probably shouldn't mention, but it's such a ridiculous story. The place is becoming popular with tourists because of stories like this one, but there's still a good chance that if you get here early, you can have the place to yourself. When visiting New Orleans, get out of the French Quarter. Grab a cab and go uptown. Go to one of the best dive bars you'll ever drink at. Go to Snake and Jake's and simply escape. <laughs>